How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. If you're a fan of the channel, please hit the like button. If you enjoy this episode, make sure to subscribe. We appreciate the love very, very much. Really great Yankees content coming out all year long, taking a look at a lot of different prospects, a lot of news. Um, there's definitely going to be stuff coming out, hopefully, in the next couple weeks. A little slow right now, but we'll update you on the current situation revolving around Hector Neris and Jack Curry of the Yes Network said some interesting things last night regarding their interest in their pursuit of Neris and where he thinks they're going to go instead. You know, this kind of goes back to the conversation we had a couple days ago, Ryan, discussing the pros and cons of Neris. He's obviously coming off his best season at 34 years old, hadn't had a sub-3 ERA since 2019 leading up to 2023, but he has experience in the postseason. He pitched for the Astros. He knows what it's like to be in those high-leverage moments, and, you know, he's a great character to have in the locker room. So there are benefits and pros to going after Neris. He wants a two-year deal north of $7 million dollars per season so he wants a little bit more of a guarantee which is why he ended up rejecting the 8.5 player option he had for this upcoming campaign but you know looking at what Jack Curry said yesterday the Yankees aren't that interested in going after Neris and spending on him more likely to bring back Wandy Peralta and Keenan Middleton you know give me your take on that and who you think would be a good addition to the bullpen yeah so first and foremost I'm doing great and I, I just wanted to point out with the Yankee bullpen right now that they only have one spot uh, available if we if we look at where the roster is at. Scott Efros and Ian Hamilton both have options, but I don't anticipate that the New York Yankees are going to option either of them, especially Hamilton after the year he had last year. He wasn't just some guy accumulating innings in the back end of the bullpen. He was a frontline guy, a guy the Yankees often went to in big situations, and as we documented all year, one of the few bright spots on the team. And as for Scott Efros, you know, the Yankees traded significant prospect capital for him. It was only one player, but Hayden Wesneski was, I believe, a top 15 guy in the organization. So if you're trading a top 15 guy... You would hope that the player you get back is somebody you would want to have in the fold. And from the brief time in which we saw him pitch for the Yankees in 2022, he was nails. He was really good, and the Yankees immediately threw him into some big situations. Has that funky arm angle as a sidewinder kind of guy. Uh, I think he's going to be excellent next year. So the Yankees really only have one spot remaining. I know that some people have floated the idea of maybe guys will get hurt, and the Yankees will have to force themselves to you know roster other names. Sure, but you can't place all these guys on the 40-man roster, and so that's an issue inherently. And if nobody gets hurt then you have to cut somebody. And I don't think the Yankees want to be in that situation. I think they'll be reactionary when it comes to potentially adding a second reliever. Uh, but as for the two options that look like it's the most likely, it's Wani Peralta and Keenan Middleton. And on one hand, in Wani Peralta, you have the guy that's been reliable, that's been, you know, effective, that's pitched to a 2.2, a 2.82 ERA with the New York Yankees. And he's, I mean, he's everything the Yankees have needed from the left-handed side. He has been reliable. He gets ground balls. He doesn't allow a lot of damage contact. He's put up sub three. ERAs in each of his years with the Yankees but the issue that because that some people can point out and some people can say hey maybe we shouldn't sign him is his walk rate was up by 5.6 percent from last year his home run per nine rate was up by 0.85 uh, maybe he is a guy who just gets, you know, kind of irons out some of those issues and has some of the command fixes needed to get his stuff back into where it needs to be and get, you know, the, the sinkers down low in the zone, the changeups out of the zone for swings and misses, whatever it may be. But I, I was a little bit uh, concerned by the uh, increase in those two metrics and it reflected in his FIP. He had a 5.05 FIP. Every single underlying metric suggests he's due for regression. Every projection system believes Wani Peralta will regress next year. Um, but with that being said, the Yankees are have more information than I have. The Yankees probably have a better understanding as to why he didn't pitch well and their continued interest in him would suggest, at least on my end, that the New York Yankees know what's wrong with him or knew what was wrong last year and have figured it out or think they can figure it out or think it's just a blip in the radar. And on the other hand, you have Keenan Middleton. And Keenan Middleton's interesting because I think he projects a lot better than a guy like Wani Peralta. He's a couple of years younger. He gets more swings and misses. He also gets ground balls at a similar rate to Wani Peralta. He had a 56.6% ground ball rate last year. And the Yankees were able to get more out of his profile because they had him use more sliders against right-handed hitters. He had a 10% increase in slider usage against right-handed hitters, saw a decrease in reliance on change-ups, and as a result, right-handed hitters went from having a 344 weighted on base average against him to a 263 weighted on base average against him when he joined the New York Yankees. He had a 3.38 ERA last year, a 3.26 expected FIP. He's in the 96th percentile in whiff rate. I think Peralta might be a little more expensive than, than Middleton, and I think because of that, I, I might side with Middleton here as the guy I would go with, but 
Don't get me wrong, either addition would make the team better, and one could also argue that Wani Peralta is left-handed, and maybe the Yankees need more left-handed pitching, and, and that's the angle they go with. Uh, but whatever decision they make, I, I think they just need to at least bring in somebody. I, I would like to see an addition made to the bullpen just to add more stability. Absolutely. I mean, look, the Yankees are considering bullpen pieces. I'd rather go with a familiar piece than one that, um, you know, we haven't seen pitch in the Bronx. Wandy's been reliable, you know, has been solid, has had two consecutive decent seasons. Obviously, does in 22. They used him more in high leverage situations last year. They kind of shied away from him being a key component in those high leverage situations. Really went towards Clay Holmes and Ian Hamilton. But Wandy can eat up 60 plus innings a season um, at a much cheaper price point and probably on a one year deal. Obviously, Keenan Middleton has had a troubled history in terms of being consistent, but he was excellent over 14.1 innings with the Yankees when they acquired him uh, from the White Sox at the deadline. Good velocity, you know, decent player. I think that Matt, Matt, Matt Blake may actually be able to maximize his talent. Um, and the truth is, like, the Yankees get substantial value out of guys who really don't earn that much money to begin with. Um, they brought in a couple other pieces this offseason. We'll see if anything materializes there in terms of talent and, and you know, contribution. But um, at the end of the day, I don't think that we need to spend seven plus million dollars a season on Hector Neris. I just don't think it's necessary, right? People will point to the postseason experience. But guys, like he's not even his numbers during the postseason are not that good. Um, you know, he has 14.1 innings. So it's a little bit more than guys that we currently have. Um, but I'll give you his numbers from the postseason over the last couple of years. He's made, he's had two seasons where he was in the playoffs, both with Houston, six innings in 2022, and then 8.1 innings this past uh, postseason with uh, the Astros. He had a 1.5 ERA back in 2022, over six innings this past year, 6.48 ERA. Um, he was not very good. His strikeouts dipped. Like, he, he was not very good in the playoffs. And, you know, we could sell the bill of goods that he has experience and that, you know, he's pitching high leverage situations. But if you're bad in high leverage situations, like, does it really matter? Um, that's kind of where, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't necessarily like the idea of paying him over seven million dollars per year Mo more likely going to be like eight to ten million over two years that's per my personal take not the biggest fan i know he's like a really good guy in the locker room and whatnot but the yankees get so much value um out of you know guys who don't make much and i think you could allocate that that money elsewhere um you know or just save it you know save it don't go over the luxury tax as much as you want to and that money can, gets rolled over into Juan Soto's contract next year um you know just signing people to sign people sometimes is um, not the most efficient move I get the sense of net, net, uh, Hector Neris you're buying him at an all-time high coming off his best season same thing with Jordan Montgomery same thing with Blake Snell and, Ka and Cashman hasn't done either he hasn't gone after you know paid top dollar for Snell or Montgomery so why would he do it for Hector Neris at 34 years old that's kind of the logic I'm following I'd rather go with Middleton, rather go with Wandy. Um, but do you think this bullpen is good enough? You know what I mean? Do you think this bullpen is good enough to be one of the best in, in baseball? I personally do. And who is your guy that you're relying on, like, late in games? You're trying to close it out. It's a close one. You know, who's the guy that you're looking to right now to get the job done? Yeah, so uh, I think the Yankees' closer option, for me at least, is always going to be Clay Holmes. Like, I think that's going to be their guy. I don't think they're acquiring a guy to, you know, fill in as their closer, maybe as an occasional closer, a guy who comes in the ninth every now and then, and has the ability to uh, be flexible enough to do that. I think bullpen flexibility is super important. The versatility to be able to say, all right, I'm going to my eighth inning guy in the fifth inning, right? Because if we're talking about the postseason, all hands are on deck, right? Like, I know, again, I just said Clay Holmes is the closer, but if the biggest spot of the game and the spot in which Clay Holmes is going to have the most success and the spot in which we need Clay Holmes to show up is the seventh inning, I'm going to Clay Holmes. I'll figure out the ninth inning when we get there. You know what I mean? Like, people, people talk about you've got to save your best guy for the ninth inning, this or that. Look, I, I don't care if the, I don't care what traditional, uh, you know, how traditionally, you know, we've managed bullpens in the past. I don't care. The biggest spot of the game is whatever the biggest spot of the game is. The game dictates that. You can't determine that before the game. I'm sorry. Like we see people like it's, it's like in football when they have to, when they try to do like scripted drives. Nah, you got a you got a game plan for what the what the situation calls for. The other defensive coordinator is blitzing every single play. You can't just have the same game plan you have, and if you keep getting sacked, you can't say, "Well, this is the script we had. This is what we planned for." You got to make adjustments. Aaron Boone is well is very well versed in this, and he's got to be familiar. And I, I'm sure he's familiar with it. Games game situations call for flexibility and versatility. Game situations will determine when you need your best guy. Uh, and if you ask me, who's the guy I'm going to in free agency? Based on the price tag, based on what I think they can be in 2024, based on what I think the Yankees can get out of them, I'm going Keenan Middleton. I, I think Keenan Middleton, again, 96 percentile whiff rate, 56.6% ground ball rate. 
I'm sorry, I, I'm going to take that profile over just a guy who gets ground balls and doesn't really get whiffs, or a guy in Neris who, you know, he's 34 years old. Like, I, I think he's really good, at, and I, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not going to sit here and backtrack what I said because the Yankees aren't interested in him. I think he's still pretty good, and I think whatever team signs him will be happy signing him, but if he's asking for money the Yankees aren't willing to give him, go get Keenan Middleton. That's I'm going to stand by that. I'm going to stand firm on that. I think the upside there is, re is remarkable. If we look at what translates to outs, it swings and misses, right? A ground ball, that can go for a hit. A ground ball, that can kick off the dirt. That could, you know, get hit to a, a, a shortstop and, you know, maybe Volpe boots it or maybe Torres boots it or maybe Rizzo can't get the scoop or maybe, you know, LeMahieu, it bobbles in his hand, whatever it may be. You're opening yourself up to a lot of uh, volatility and to variance, right? And in the postseason, those moments, you know, that can change a postseason outcome. Everyone says, oh, this World Series champion is luckier. That World Series champion is luckier. This championship team in any sport is lucky. You need lucky bounces to win it all, right? Like, uh, that's how sports work, right? Or in basketball, you just, you know, assemble a super team and then you win it all. But that's that's a different sport. In baseball, lucky bounces, getting a ball to drop that shouldn't drop, a fielder making an error that he shouldn't, that's how you win baseball games. That's that's the difference between World Series champions and teams who are really good and some of the best teams to never win it all, right? We all know those, oh, that team was so good, how'd they not win it all? Because luck isn't in your control. And I think you isolate that variable, get rid of that variable by striking guys out, right? Like, there's no ball in play there. You could say, what if it gets past the catcher? I'm sorry, that just never happens, right? And you have Jose Trevino there, right? Like, it's it just... How many times do guys reach on wild pitch strike or drop third strikes? You know, like that never happens, right? Errors happen all the time. Ground balls get up, get through the middle that shouldn't get through. I'm going to call to an example in a playoff game that we played a year ago uh, or two years ago, I guess, at this point that frustrates the hell out of me and I guess frustrates the hell out of any Yankee fan. Do you remember that game three in Cleveland? Yankees are up like 5-3, Peralta's on the mound, and it's just bloop after bloop after bloop, after how's that ball not caught, after how is that ball a hit, I mean, Clark Schmidt, the game ends on Clark Schmidt throwing a slider in the dirt, and Oscar Gonzalez scoops it out and hits a base hit, and the Cleveland Guardians win, and the Yankees were on the brink of elimination, right, if you just get swings and misses in those spots, that stuff can't happen, right, so I think the ability to get swings and misses is super important, that's why I'm going with Keenan Middleton, I get it, Peralta's left-handed, and I get it, Neris is more established, but I know one thing about the New York Yankees. It doesn't matter how established that guy is. It doesn't matter how much of a, of, a, of a name he is in the industry. The Yankees can convert relievers into great talent. Nobody knew who Ian Hamilton was before 2023. Nobody cared about Clay Holmes before 2022, or 2021, excuse me. Wani Peralta was traded for Mike Talkman, right? Like, let, like, let's be real here. It doesn't matter the name. As long as the talent is there, as long as the Yankees can optimize it, and the Yankees feel like that player is a player that can get better in their organization, that's really all that matters. And I think Keenan Middleton is a prime candidate to do that in 2024. Yeah, I mean, especially because he's going to be super affordable. He's 30 years old now. You're going to probably, what, a one or two year, very, very low money deal, probably a club option after next season. I think it's fine. You know, that's that's not a bad alternative. The Yankees routinely push out really good bullpen arms at nominal costs, and Naris is a is a luxury. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're spending money for a luxury, a guy that's coming off his best season. And honestly, based on historical, you know, stats of his, I don't think he's running back a 171 ERA. That's my personal take. That's probably what the Yankees are thinking. Um, and I think they're fine with what they have if not adding one of their familiar faces back into the mix but guys always happy to hear your thoughts down below in the youtube comment section make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you guys on the next fireside yankees episode